Mike Pacelli here, coming to you from my studio in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome. After the last video I did on the genius of John Lennon guitar, I got a lot of requests to do a follow-up, so here it is. And for this video, I'll talk about John Lennon's lead guitar work in the Beatles, and also some of his great acoustic guitar uh, work. Um, John, in the early Beatles, played a uh, Rickenbacker 325. This is a Rickenbacker 330, and I'm playing through a 1965 Vox Berkeley Super Reverb, which is this, this guy back here. Plug straight in. So they came back, the Beatles that is, from uh, their successful U.S. tour in 1964, did the uh, Ed Sullivan show, and uh, while they were in Miami, they were writing some songs, and they wrote, John wrote, You Can't Do That. Um, so you get back to the studio, Abbey Road, in late February of 64, and on You Can't Do That, it's the first time John Lennon plays lead guitar. So here's John Lennon's solo in You Can't Do That. solo. Uh, let me get a close-up and then I'll talk about it. That's such a great rock and roll solo, uh, full of Chuck Berry bravado and just, you know, reckless abandon from a, a guy in his early 20s. Now, uh, John is basically playing in G, and he's thinking uh, pentatonic and double stops that he does all throughout his career. So when he first started, he's just thinking of a G bar chord, getting up to the third string, uh, kind of making it like a C, but just playing the, these two notes on the basically on the uh, fourth and the third strings. You know, but you can hear on the record that he gets the low notes when he begins, like. And then the first cool lick is, it's like getting an octave D, right, by bending the fifth fret up on the third string. And then, right, really raucous. See, that's on bending on the, uh, fifth fret of the third string, then I'm fretting the uh, sixth fret of the third string, and back down to the fifth. So up. <laughs> I love that. Then another just G. And Chuck Berry lick. And then instead of bending the sixth fret, like a lot of guys would go, he bends the fifth. Since he's on the second string fifth, he grabs the third. Now just double stops. And then up to like a D7 form, he's actually playing a G7 chord, but like a typical D7 form brought up to uh, the uh, seventh fret. Sliding into it. And then listen closely, you hear that B note on the seventh fret of the first string go to A. Right? And then uh, bending up on the third string, fifth fret, down. So right? and then again with an octave thing trying to get. Just kind of Chuck Berry tossed off rock licks at the end, bending on that third string, fifth fret. And then very John Lennon at the end of it, just letting go of his hand. 
right? Getting the third and the second string open. And then playing the first chord. You know? <laughs> I love that. The next time we hear John Lennon take a lead guitar solo is on the song Long Tall Sally. The Beatles recorded it in March of 1964, and there's two solos on the record. John takes the first, and George takes the second. Here's John Lennon's solo. Take a close up of that. There's so many cool parts in that solo. Uh, from the way he starts it, kind of like, once again, it's in G. Um, like, you can't do that. And he's using that uh, G7 form again, like a D7 chord, but bring it up to the uh, D7 fret. And the, uh, or, He's playing off a of Ringo when he Then he slides down to his uh, pentatonic. Basically on the third string, bend five, bend it down to three, to five of the fourth string. And then nice walk up. Right? Do that slow. thing on the D. Double stop on the third fret, uh, strings two and three. And then a classic blues kind of line. Right, on the third fret, uh, I'm sorry, third string fret seven, second string fret six, bar string two and three on the fifth fret to the third. So, And another Chuck Berry lick. Right. And then end on a D7. Just so raucous and good. Now I want to talk about a solo that John Lennon played on the song Honey Pie off of the White Album. Um, it's only four bars long, but he sounds so much like a clarinet. It's, it's uncanny. And you can tell he's just having fun and just reaching for some stuff. Um, it's based on some simple chords. G to E flat 7, E7 to uh, A7, D7, G7. And... Uh, the solo goes like this. <clears throat> oh, so good. Uh, here's a close-up of it. All right, let's talk about it a little bit. Um, it's based off of a, you know, a G arpeggio, and uh, he's playing it pretty high up on the neck because you can hear that the high notes have little fatter 
uh, tone. So it starts on um, the 12th fret of the uh, second string to the 15th fret, and then he mutes the 12th fret of the uh, third string. All right, and then uh, 12th fret of the uh, fourth string, back to the second string, 12th fret, 13, 12, uh, 12th fret of the third string. And then as the chord switches to E flat seven, he plays kind of an E flat raise five. And then just reaching for notes. So after the E flat uh, raise five arpeggio, which is um, fourth string fret 13, uh, second and third uh, strings on fret 12, then we're on the second string, um, 13, 14, 16, 17, to 19, 18, and then uh, 17. <laughs> I can't do it as good as John Lennon, but uh, just listen to the record. It's just absolutely brilliant. In January of 1969, the Beatles played together live for the last time on the rooftop of Abbey Road Studio. During a song called Get Back, John Lennon takes the solos. Uh, it's a simple little song in the key of A, just truck along with a G, D hit, you know. And John Lennon plays this solo. Let's take a closer look at it. Alright, the song is in the key of A, and it's pretty much in the B.B. King kind of blues box up here. Based on uh, string 3, fret 11, string 2, fret uh, 10 and 12, and string 1, fret 12. So you start on string 3, 11, to uh, 10 of 2. Then you get to the 12th fret of the second uh, string, bend it up, and with your pinky, get the 12th fret of the first string. Then he's uh, switching down to another position, which I kind of see it as a D position, but nevertheless on uh, string uh, 5, fret uh, 9, to string 4, fret 7, uh, 9, to uh, string 3, fret uh, 7. Okay. On that third string, move down to um, fret 5, and then uh, fret 7 of string 4. Right. And the GD kicks. Then he repeats the same motif, but this time a little more playful with some muting. Now I'm muting with the palm of my right hand to get that little mute sound. So I'm muting the 10th uh, fret of string 2. On string 2, fret 12, bend up. Back down to the second position. Same lick. And then on the end, um, <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's um, fret seven of string two to uh, fret five, and then seven five on string three. Uh, string two, fret five, string three, seven five. Seven, and then open strings uh, five, four, and three. I'm sorry. So John Lennon, just so perfect. I use that a lot.
Now I'd like to talk to you about one of my favorite songs off of Abbey Road, um, I Want You, She's So Heavy. John plays some great guitar on it. Uh, I'm using some different equipment now. I've got a 1967 uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb. I'm using my board. Uh, there's a Blue Sky, uh, a TC Chorus, an EP Booster for the clean. And then for the overdrive, I'm going to use a Jetter GS124, plus my trusty Pacelli um, uh, signature pick. Um, and all this charts and tabs are available at MikePacelli.com if you want a little more clear information on what I'm about to show you. So uh, it starts with a D minor chord to a D minor over F, uh, E7 uh, flat 9, a little walk down to a B flat 7, to an A augmented. And on top of that, John plays this great line. So I got it on the loop. Isn't that great? Um, that's basically on the second string. Uh, fret 7, slide up to 10. Fret uh, 11 and 12. And a cool line, again, I'm still on the B string, fret 15 to fret 16 of the third string to fret 17 of the uh, first string bent up. Come bring that down. And then just uh, arpeggiating on that uh, A augmented. I just love that. Okay, then John plays and sings uh, the same part. Um, and it's again kind of bluesy, just like A minor-ish. Um, the main line is on uh, strings four and three. Fret starts on fret seven of four. Uh, string three, frets five and seven. Right. So it's just fret uh, seven bent up, bent down to five. Got it. And then a little walk down. And all that is is coming down. So the just the notes again, you can look at the tab, but uh, we're on uh, fret uh, five of string four to seven up two. I'll do it really slow. You might want to play that here. It's important if you want to get the John Lennon thing to bend that C. Because right? that's very John. Then when the chord changes uh, to D, he plays the same shape but up here in a, like a D pentatonic position. Double stop. So cool. Then on string four, uh, five, six, seven. And again, that E7 uh, flat nine. You can play it here if you want. Or, or this position, which is uh, from string four, five to two, frets seven, six, seven, six. Or down here. And back to the bluesy stuff. So a, a couple of things to remember is like the little, you can add this double stop on the A too. Right, I'm grabbing the uh, third string and the second string on fret seven. You can put that anywhere you want. You know, fret seven of string three up and then release to fret uh, five of string three to fret seven of string four. Right? And then one time later on, he goes, he makes that major, which is so cool.
I can go on and on with that. Um, listen to the record and you'll get it. But also what's cool is on the very end, when they play the same chords as the intro over and over again, there's a really great uh, double lead guitar line that John and George uh, played together. You can do it if you uh, tune your low string down to a D. Then on top of the um, repeating chords, which I've got a loop too, be like this. I'll get it a second time. There's this line. It's just so wonderful. Um, listen to the record. That's basically uh, all of the parts, and, and you'll have it perfectly. I'd like to talk a bit about John Lennon's masterpiece, Julia, from the White Album. Uh, he wrote it in 1968, and uh, I believe he had some help with the uh, finger-picking style and the writing of a few lyrics from Donovan. Um, the, the finger picking style is basically uh, six notes, six moves, you could, you could say, too. Now, it's easy if I show you it on an A minor seventh. If we play an A minor seventh like this, voice from fifth string to first, um, open two, open one, three. And I have a capo on the second fret, as you can see, but I'm still thinking of this in first position. Okay, you'd play the fifth string and first string together. Then you play the fourth and then the third string. Then play the sixth string. Then play the second string. And then play the fourth string. So it's one, two, and. Feel that? Five, one, fourth to third string. Sixth string, second string, fourth string. So that's the, the basic pattern through the whole song. Now the song begins on a C chord with a G note on top with your pinky. And it's the only time you have to uh, move the bass note is on the C chord because it's always moving between the, the root and the fifth. Uh, sometimes it actually starts on the fifth and the root. I'll show you that in a minute. But on the C chord, so you play, then you move your third finger to the sixth string to get the fifth of the chord. So again, though, it's fifth string and first string together, fourth string, third, play the sixth string when you move to that bass note, second string, fourth string. So that, on the C chord, it sounds... So it moves through the chords, C to A minor, E minor 7th, with the G on top. That's the prelude, does that twice. And then the verse, C to A minor 7th, G minor 7th, to A7, oh, G minor 9th, to A7, F add 9, F minor 7th, with the 3rd on top. C. A minor, E minor, G, C. And the bridge is B minor to C, A minor 7th, A minor 6th, E minor 7th, E minor 6th, E minor raised 5, E minor. Now you can download the tabs uh, on my homepage and I'll tell you about that a little later. So, um, that's basically the song. The only thing that's a little confusing sometimes is that when you play a chord like C and you're doing that kind of alternating bass thing, you kind of always want to play the bass note first and then the fifth, you know? Right? That kind of thing, you know? And it works out on most chords, but like when you get to the E minor, 
you're actually playing the fifth of E minor first, which is also on the fifth string. And some of the other chords, like when you go to the G minor, instead of playing the G first and then the D, you're playing the D and then the G. Right? So you're playing the fifth of the chord first. And then G minor ninth. On the A seventh, instead of the root of the chord, you're playing the fifth of the chord first. Right? Same thing when you get to the F. That gets a little confusing, but uh, you can work it out. All right, so I'll get a close-up and do it uh, nice and slow for you, and then we'll talk a little more about it. Julia is such a beautiful song. It was written for John Lennon's mother, and it's just so endearing and, 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 and precious. And that picking pattern is just amazing. So I, I hope you uh, use it in your own songs. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you'd like to drop me a line, you can do so at mikepacelli.com. It's always cool to hear from you, and I'll answer every email. And on my homepage there is also a place where you can download the tabs for everything I, I talked about in this video. So. Uh, Thanks for hanging out with me. Until next time, I'm Mike Pacelli. See you later.